Hi there, this is Alana Terry with Jamie Hampton. Welcome to another episode of the Praying Christian Women podcast. Dun dun dun. dun as we dun, wait for, dun. <laughs> for a theme song to come in or something. How are you? Doing well. How about you? Things are going pretty okay. It's been a few days because we had the weekend and then, well, I guess I think we did once since the weekend, didn't we? I'm trying to think because, oh, today's yeah, already Thursday. I think we did. Yeah, I we know. did a Tuesday. Some, that's right. That's right. Yeah, we so, aired, uh, yeah, yeah. We interview Monday. We met on Tuesday, skipped yesterday, and then today we're back in the mm-hmm. saddle. Yeah. So are you guys like filling up your, your schedule all over again? Is it feeling pretty busy with all the school meetings and stuff? Today was our busiest day that I can remember. I actually had to, we had three kids on simultaneous meetings because my daughter's Japanese immersion class is starting to do Zoom meetings three times a week. And Mm -hmm. this was her first day. So the boys both have, their meetings are kind of flexible and optional. Um, The teachers have been really careful in all of their communications to say the Zoom meetings are optional even the even mm-hmm. the lessons they're saying mm-hmm. are optional because I know there are kids yeah. that they have not been able to reach yet with paper right. packets and they don't want to they want to make sure that nobody mm-hmm. feels like and it was very kind today you know the immersion program is really high intensity in terms of right. parent involvement they're very strict like mm-hmm. if I send in and if Eva sends in an assignment and I'm supposed to check over the English parts Um, Mm -hmm. like the math is taught in Japanese, but so they learn Mm -hmm. the Japanese names for things, but we are responsible in the kindergarten year as parents for helping them with that basic addition and subtraction. Mm -hmm. And, um, if I check it and I miss something that's incorrect, it gets sent back and it says, please correct. And, you know, like, so they're very intense, but like during this time, they've been incredibly gracious and very like, They've also today in the meeting reiterated, hey, don't don't have parent guilt about your kid not doing as many assignments as you hoped that right. they could do. Mm-hmm. I mean, we know people are really just trying to get used to this system. So I've appreciated yeah. that. And it mm-hmm. has yeah, because I was starting to get, I won't say frantic. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's not a good word. Yeah. But trying my oldest is totally self-sufficient. Like I barely know what he's doing. I, I can right, check in right. and I have, but he gets everything mm-hmm. done and, and lets me know when he has a problem. He's in middle school, but right, right. the other two, I'm trying to, you know, oversee their work and it does take a lot of just keeping their schedule yeah. straight when they need to be on zoom and what I need to have available. So yeah. we, yeah, so now we have Zoom, the Zoom app on all of our devices, couple of phones, couple of iPads, and then uh-huh. we have one <laughs> webcam to share between among everyone. Oh, so, funny. Yeah, uh-huh. it, but it's good because it's really neat for me to see them. They're having connection with teachers. They're having interaction with students, and it's mm. been very positive. That's good. Yeah. I know our youngest, he asked me today, he said, could I just ask dad that the next time when he goes to the grocery store that I could just go with him? I'll wear gloves and a mask, but I haven't been in the car in a month. I know. <laughs> and he's such a, you know, he's an extrovert he's and he wants to person. be. I know. Mm-hmm. And your other two, would you consider both of them, both of the other two introverts? My oldest, absolutely. My, I know the like, oldest. Way definitely. more introverted than anybody in world that I know. And then um, my middle son, he can kind of go either way. Like he's very um, go with the flow, but he will, you know, he's funny because he's super into music, but he plays it really loud. So like retreating into music is a very introverted thing. You know, like he probably Mm -hmm. spends four hours a day listening to music, but he also likes to put it on like really, really, really loud, which is more of the extroverted side of things. If I had to guess, I'm going to guess that he's, you know, a little more introvert. Like if everybody's one or the other, I'd say introvert for him. But so he, he's um, not there to like, he wouldn't necessarily be one to relieve some of the 
extroverted tendencies of the youngest, like in order, like, do you know what I mean? So like, he's not yeah, yeah. really he, game. He does. Well, he does fulfill that need for the family <laughs> by entertaining our youngest. Um, not always by his choice, <laughs> right. but, um, but no, he, they get along really well, but sometimes, yeah, sometimes he just needs his space. You know, there's a pretty big difference between age 10 and age 12. And, you know, we want to, make sure that he knows, Hey, it's okay to have some time alone. <laughs> yeah. Well, but we need to get our kids back on good. their, their little video chat. Thing. That I haven't done that fun. in a long time because I, I think we got hung up getting our stuff figured out. And I think getting now your that schedule, do, I know. Yeah. Okay. Probably. Yeah. Just let us know good times because yeah. that was really fun. For, yeah. We have to I start that back up. It was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who have been longtime listeners, you know that we've moved to a different format just in these kind of COVID conversations. And I thought it would be really fun to add a tiny bit of both levity and a little bit of predictability. So I came up with more just for fun questions for us that are all quarantine related. So I thought that for the next however long we're doing these COVID conversations or until I run out of questions. So are you ready for today's just for fun? I am. I always feel like with these spur of the moment questions, I'm terrible. I just stand here. You and like, hate them. I know. <laughs> I don't hate them. I actually enjoy them. But oh, really? I need time to process things sometimes. And so what I don't like is when I have like, you know, the quiet air space. So when I go back oh. and publish the episodes, I see this big, long, like, <laughs> That's right. Hey, well, remind me, I can send you the list. Um, no, cause obviously I, since I came up with them, I know them. So it's only fair if you wanted well, to see them. Let's try a spur of the moment one. Hit me. Hit you. All right. <laughs> you only get to watch one TV show or movie for the entire time of quarantine. What do you pick? Okay. So one TV show or movie and it has, that's the only thing that you can do. It's going to, it's going to be your only movie entertainment for the entire quarantine. Okay. So it would not be a movie because I do have movies that I like, but I'm not, I don't like even my favorite movies. I do get tired of after uh -huh, a while, watching uh -huh. them over and over again and I need a break. So right, right. it would have to be a series. Mm -hmm. One. Okay. I, and it would have to be one probably that I haven't seen. So I would say like the office is one of my all time favorites that we've watched mm -hmm. a few times through, but we've seen it a few times through. So, um, right. You kind of want something new. That's true. We have, I got my husband the complete collection of mash. DVDs oh yeah. Scott for, likes those a lot too. For Christmas last year. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I would say, I would say that might be maybe that if it was just up to me, like just for something, because mm -hmm. it's kind of nostalgic. It brings back memories of like I watched it when I was a kid. You know, I remember mm -hmm. being at my grandma's house for dinner on Sundays. I yeah. think it was Sundays and it would be on. Um, maybe that. And I'm trying, but I, I do like funny stuff too. So, and that is funny. Right, I, right. I think maybe mm -hmm. I would pick MASH because I've been wanting to revisit to revisit that series for a long time. I don't know. Okay. What about you? I don't know. See, I'm not happy with my answer. I feel like if I thought about it, it would be different. <laughs> How about you? We'll come back to this on our next episode. Do you yeah. know when I said that I would watch MASH? Um, I don't know. It's a little hard because like you, there's part of me that would love something new. I think that it's really important to have things to look forward to. Um, even if it's just like, oh, it's, you know, like we're doing psych now in the evenings as a family. And like, we all look forward to that time. And I think that's important. And so in a way, like a show that you've already seen before, there's a little bit less of that. But then again, like I would hate to pick a show I haven't seen before and have it turn into something I don't like, <laughs> you know? Right. And so then you're stuck. I, would, I know. I probably would pick Psych, um, which, you know, thankfully is what we're watching right now. Or, you know, I'm going to cheat and bend the rules and say if I could do, instead of like one movie, maybe like the entire Marvel series, um, that's always a, a, I really like Marvel, as our listeners know by now. So yeah, if I had I to was... pick, yeah, if I had to pick over Psych or Marvel, right now I'd probably pick Psych just because I think the laughter is so important. Um, if it kind of came down to just like, what do I think is better entertainment? I'd say Marvel. I was going to say that if it, if there was a series 
that that there would be tons of movies in that series to mm-hmm, be able mm-hmm. to it'll use. last you a while <laughs> yeah it would last you a while and um we did so our family did a star wars marathon where we started with episode one and we incorporated like um solo and mm-hmm. uh, rogue Kinda one like and the different ones mm-hmm. sort of in as much chronological order as we could um and we considered going back to the Mandalorian because that's another one th- that's part of mm-hmm. sort of Star Wars ish, mm-hmm. um, but we haven't done that one yet. But you know, I think themes those are fun because it is. It's something to look forward to. It's like okay, we're gonna yeah. have a movie night and we know what mm-hmm. we're gonna watch and we're looking. Forward yeah, you to don't the next have to one. pick it. Yeah, even you know we've got Disney Plus now. Even just like a Pixar marathon, I think would be kind of fun. Oh, that we would. watched. We watched Onward. Have you seen that one yet? Yes, we just saw that. Yeah. Did you like it? It was better than I thought. I, when I saw okay. the previews, I thought uh-huh. this is bizarre and like mm-hmm. horrible. But no, it was, I enjoyed it more than I thought. Cool. I don't know. Did you not like it? There was one aspect that I really didn't like, which if people haven't seen it, it's probably not worth going into. But um, like the whole thing revolves around two kids who lost their dad when they were both super young. And having lost my mom and had a sibling who lost her mom really young, like there was part of it that I just didn't, it, it just sort of left a bad taste in my mouth the way they handled a couple different things. Yeah. Um, there it was were, okay. Yeah. And there were a couple of things where, yeah, I, I, I'm with you. And I didn't, I actually mm-hmm. was in and out of the room during that time when it was oh, playing, okay. but, but yeah, there yeah. were, but there were a couple of, of aspects regarding that in terms of kind of just glossing over, oh, well, it's no big deal. I have this guy, so I didn't need my dad. Exactly. That's kind of what it was. It was like, yeah. well, my dad died before I even met him, so I can't miss him. And I think that's stupid. <laughs> so yes. no, I, yeah, that aspect of it, I kind of felt like it was a little, like it kind of glossed over that and minimized the pain that he probably it sort of yeah. did yeah 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 but my kids really liked it it was pretty cute so. it was entertaining yeah and it wasn't it was as bizarre as i thought it was mm-hmm. gonna be i just yeah it was a weird yeah. premise yeah so we watched wally one day when my son was recovering from his tonsillectomy and we've gotten to where we watch everything with subtitles now which my husband hates and the rest of us really appreciate like i catch so much more with the subtitles and Wally is hilarious to watch with subtitles. Cause you know, like the first third of the movie, it's really just like these two robots making mechanical noises at each other. And the way the subtitles like explain the noises is so adorable. It will be like mechanical whirring joyfully, <laughs> or you know, just weird things like that. That's funny. I have never even thought of that. I, we watched um, Cast Away. Uh, a few oh, you did. Ago. Oh, and I, I can't handle that one. <laughs> and I was wondering what the subtitles would be like. Oh, oh yeah, no so kidding. There's so much silence. You know, they're probably right. Like, yeah, but he does. There's there's some monologue, I guess. Anyway, yeah. No, I mean, he's a great actor. It's a great movie, but there's just so much physical pain that he goes through that I can't stomach the movie anymore. There's another one. Um, I can't remember. Robert Redford plays this guy that goes on a sailing voyage. And he gets stranded at sea. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember what it's called, but it was that movie was so stressful for me. I already have, you know, that one of my fears is buoys, Buoys. (laughs) which the fear of the buoy is not the buoy itself necessarily. It's the idea of something being underwater, like, like the rope or chain or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Like, anyway, Mm -hmm. that whole movie involved this just like, unknown under the ocean him out there small yeah. and it, so it, it sort of played on some of I think my deeper yeah. fears and that was an exhausting movie to watch you know okay and I'm going to give one more thing and then we're going to move on from movies for people who absolutely don't care about what movies we've been watching but um you you're into sci-fi so you might know what movie I'm talking about I can't think of the name it's kind of old and it's about these people who go like under the earth and they meet this like water creature yes. and okay a so bit? was it the abyss that sounds right Maybe yeah the abyss. um there are a lot of scenes where they're in their like i don't know if it's scuba gear but they're mm-hmm. in like helmets and 
even just watching that and he, like you can hear their breathing, <clears throat> excuse me, like it started to make me feel like I couldn't get a deep breath, like this kind of, not quite a claustrophobic feeling, but like um, we had a swimming pool growing up and I didn't like, we had snorkels, but I didn't like snorkeling in the pool because I never felt like I could get a full breath. And it kind of reminded me of that, like, again, like a movie just made me super anxious just watching. There was a movie, maybe it was that one about going mm -hmm. down, diving deep and um, it uh -huh. was sci-fi and they actually had a special kind of liquid that you breathe to give your lungs That's enough right. pressure. Yeah. Yeah. That was like, I, that was a fascinating, I, the thing I love about sci-fi is things like that where there's just this like fascinating thing that you've never heard of that, that, mm -hmm, they, mm -hmm. that seems like it's real, but that particular scene where you basically drown before you start yeah, again, that <laughs> yeah. that made me claustrophobic and feel like I couldn't breathe yeah, in real same life. Yeah, kind of feeling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we are done with our just for fun. Done with our, our movies. movies. <laughs> yeah. So what else, what else is going on? Did you want to do some of the uh, verse of the day type stuff? Yeah, let's do that. We had talked about, so you had talked about the book of John and wanting to read through. Do you want to do that or do you want me to find it um, and read through that? Either one, just. Um, well, let's both pull it up. And maybe. Holy yeah. week. Maybe you want to start with just like John 14. That's sure. kind of where, where it all begins. Mm -hmm. Are you using the NIV? Um, yep. Just because when I typed in Google, that's what pulled up. Me too. <laughs> me too. Hey, that would be a good just for fun question for, you know, sometime is what translation do you like the best? Ah, what would you answer? Um, different things for different things. So I oh, like okay. the NIV. I love for clarity. So like if I'm, mm -hmm. whenever I'm writing something like for, you know, a blog post or for a prayer guide or something, I like mm -hmm. the NIV. I feel like it's really clear. But okay. in terms of accuracy and, you know, they talk about like the ESV is more of a literal versus right. translation. Mm -hmm, so I like mm -hmm. reading it, but I, I like using different ones. But in terms of just straight up clarity and easy to read and figure out what they mean, I think I like using the NIV for that. Okay. But so I, you've heard my rant about no. the new NIV? I don't know if I have. I have okay. my own issue <clears throat> with it. With so the there's the 1984 neutral. NIV. Yes. Um, and that's the one that I grew up reading and memorizing from mm -hmm. and was hands down what I was most comfortable with. And now you can't even like purchase that NIV. They've changed it. So like the NIV that you can buy today is slightly different than the NIV back then. And it really bothers me because I, I used to do a lot of Bible memorization. And now I just, I'm throwing this little, I've been throwing like a, an eight year long hissy fit because like I can't get it in the translation I want it anymore. Now the gender neutral stuff, I actually don't mind. Like, so basically what they do in the new NIV, it will be like, um, love one another as brothers would now be like, love one another as brothers and sisters. Like to me that that's totally fine. And like having studied Spanish where, you know, hermanos doesn't just mean brothers. It means, right, it means everybody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm fine with that. I know some, try to even like take away gender pronouns for God and stuff, which isn't in my opinion, whatever. But um, so I don't mind the new NIV for that. I just like, it bugs me because I was used to memorizing verses from one version. And now again, I'm still in my eight year long hissy fit of why did you change it on me? <laughs> yes. And I'm, I definitely, you can't even really search that translation. Like if you I wanted to it's like copy and paste online or yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's some words and wording that is just sentimentally, I think, and, and just preferentially, mm -hmm. like I like the way they worded sure. that. Yeah. Yeah. Like they've even changed Psalm 23 a slight bit. And yeah. Psalm 19 like, has some things where I'm like, but I liked the way they said it. Before. I liked it. Yeah. I liked how it was. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. So Let's read John 14 in the new NIV version. <laughs> All right. All right. I'll read a couple verses. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Okay. Let's give a tiny bit of context. So this is Jesus talking to his disciples at the Last Supper, which coincidentally is today, right? Mon Maundy Thursday. Okay. Right. Because you, I used to call, I used to think it was just my mom mispronouncing Monday. Because oh, she would really? say, my mom would say Monday, like she'd say, well, last oh. Monday I was doing this. And so I used oh. to think that it was just her saying 
Maundy, like, and so I used to call it Monday <laughs> Thursday. That's really cute. Isn't that funny? I never remember though. It's not Maudie, right? There is an no. N in there. Is it there? M Maundy. M A U N D Y, right? D Y. Yeah, that's yeah. what I would have thought. Okay. So this what does is, that mean? Do you know what Maundy means? I don't know. I actually have no idea. How about I'll read some verses and you can look it up. You can do All some right. people sleuthing. All right. So this is what Jesus says to his disciples at the Last Supper. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. All right, did you find an answer for us? I did. This is interesting. So the Thursday for before Easter is known as either Maundy Thursday or Holy Thursday. Maundy mm -hmm. is derived from the Latin word for command and refers to Jesus' commandment to the disciples to love one another as oh, I, I have like loved that. you. Isn't that neat? That is. So like, I guess, commands, commands, like, is that probably, yeah, same, probably. same suffix or whatever you yep. call it? That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's really neat. Um, yeah. I, I love, especially the opening of this where, you know, Jesus is focusing on comforting his disciples, you know, he knows that they're about to go. I mean, Jesus himself is about to go through the worst physical and spiritual torments anybody could. And yet he's, he's thinking about the comfort that his disciples are going to need. Yeah. And knowing that they, they, they don't really even understand at this point mm -hmm. what it all means, mm -hmm. but that, yeah, but that, that they are troubled about what's going to happen. And, they probably yeah. like a kid, you know, they know something's up, but they're not really sure exactly what, and they don't know how to put into words how they're feeling or mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. to do next. Yeah. You know what I find really interesting? I forget if it's, I think it might be in Matthew. In one of the resurrection accounts, Jesus, when he appears to the women at the tomb, he says, go tell the disciples and Peter and mm -hmm. how it almost feels as if at this point, Peter has separated himself from the group. Um, and then I think it's Paul says, you know, he appeared to the disciples and to Peter hmm. and we never get an account of that, but it makes it sound as if Jesus and Peter had a one-on-one -on -one kind of reunion, you know, so imagine being Peter, you have just sworn that you're going to, you know, fight to the death for this man you love. And then when it comes down to it, you realize that you're a coward, which, I mean, he gets a bad rap, but I can't blame him for that you know we talked about with one of the novels um that you and i discussed on the unabridged uh christian fiction audiobook podcast you know that whole quote about don't judge somebody who fails a test that you have yet to pass yeah you know like peter gets an absolute bad rap but i think his response is so human to the whole thing you know from trying to cut the guy's ear off to denying jesus to to real like feeling like he doesn't have a place with the disciples anymore i would love to see or just imagine what that reunion specifically with jesus and peter would have looked like yeah no and i mean i've had times like that in my own life where i've been like okay lord i'm gonna do this i get all gung-ho and i'm gonna, mm -hmm. I'm gonna do this mm -hmm. i'm gonna live for you and then it all blows up and, and then you realize that you're just you know, you're just a peter yeah. You know what's yeah. funny? So, uh, and this is okay. I keep getting off on tangents, but regarding Peter, yeah, I was thinking about this. Um, so it was when I was writing part of uh, of my book Malnourished that I wrote a few years mm -hmm. back, and it was t it the, it was a section talking about Peter walking on the water and coming toward Jesus, and then petering out. Do you, think that's where, <laughs> do you think that's where the term came from? I would from? not be surprised. Yeah, he didn't follow through. He petered yeah, out. That is what like, I think that might be where it comes from. And I never had thought about that before until yeah. I was meditating on this whole scene of Peter. <laughs> and I was and like, you came up with a really clever pun. And then you realize, oh, that's probably where it came from. <laughs> that's probably the origin of that term. Anyway, so back to Jesus and his disciples. Yes, but yeah. Um, well, I've got a funny Peter story before we go back okay, to this. Okay, do it. When, it. when we were kids, we, I, like, I 
don't remember the exact context, but I know there was a, these groups. I think we would do like either a church camp out or maybe just a few families from church would go camping together. I don't know how official it was, whether it was like a church thing or just friends of ours from church. So I was really young, like probably like preschool or very early elementary age. So we would do these um, like Bible dramas, like the kids, um, and we would act out Bible stories, which looking back was like absolutely adorable because I don't think it was like a structured, okay, kids, you know, there wasn't a Aww. director. It was just, you know, what we did. And then we would put them on for the adults. And whoever played Peter, you knew that Peter was Peter because he would say his line and then he would go, hmm. And the reason we did that is because at some point somebody said, Peter always spoke before he thought, which is true. But as a kid, like as a five-year-old kid, we took that so literally that whenever Peter said his line, so he would be like, Jesus, I will never deny you. I'll go to the death with you. And then he'd put his hand on his chin and stroke his chin thoughtfully and say, hmm. So that he would be thinking after he <laughs> after spoke. He Oh, that is so funny. I love it. Yeah. I yeah. love it. Well, anything else that jumps out to you from the first few verses we read? Well, just that he's, um, he's kind of telling them not to be troubled because where I'm going, like I'm there, there's a future for you mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you, you know, and so I just think that what he's saying there is so applicable to all of us anytime and anywhere, but just, um, especially now, like when we find ourselves in, in this crazy, like COVID, you know, mid COVID mm -hmm. crisis time, it's like, you know, there's so much hope in that, that, that he is just like when his disciples were in this uncertain time, they didn't know the end. They kind of felt like things were different. They didn't know how, th how to feel or what to think and, yeah. and just that he was giving them the first thing that he said is where I'm going, like I'm preparing a place for you. There's a future for mm -hmm. you with me. Mm -hmm. So no matter what happens right now, no matter what happens in the weeks to come, mm -hmm. like there's that hope. And I love that. Yeah. So this is really interesting because most people, like if you just read this section and this is the thought that I had forever, Jesus had to die. Like he's going to be dead within like 24 hours or less than 24 hours of this conversation. And so we think of that as him going away and then he's going to come back as in like, I'm going to come back from the dead. And so like what you would picture and what I believed for a long, long time is, okay, so Jesus is saying, I'm about to die, but I've got to die so that I can prepare a place for you. And then I'm going to come right back when I raise from the dead. Um, but in one of the resurrection accounts, when the women are embracing him, he says, don't hold on to me. Don't you know, I haven't yet gone to the father. Right. And so it makes me wonder, like, so where was Jesus? Because I think the simplistic answer is Jesus died, went up to heaven, did what he needed to do to kind of get things ready for the disciples. And then he came back. But he specifically says after the resurrection on Easter morning, don't hold on to me because I haven't gone to the father yet. So where, where in the world was he? Okay. And so then now, and this is theological. So, and I am not qualified to comment on the theological things because I just have a couple of bits and pieces that I, I, I think personally, I want to look into more today now that you mentioned that, but, um, in the apostles creed, right. It mentions he descended into hell and the mm -hmm. Bible talks about him preaching or speaking to mm -hmm. those that had died before. Mm -hmm. And that has been taken in lots of different theological paths. Right. So yeah. I don't it's know the answer yeah. to that, but it is interesting. Yeah. You know, like I don't, I don't necessarily think there's a biblical basis to say like, yeah, Jesus spent a couple days in hell, <laughs> you know, but that's how some people take it. And, and or it could just hell, mean that he was you know, very, I mean, yeah, exactly. It's very interesting. Hades um, was the literal, yeah, and, and that had a different connotation. Which is different than like the fiery hell punishment, right. you know? Hades yeah, it was like this, yeah, just basically the grave yeah. where, where the did, grave. yeah, it was strange, very strange. So, anyway, but no, I love that the focus here is on comfort, and I do think that it's applicable, 
you know, for right now. What would you say is kind of the biggest struggle that you've or and or your family have gone through through this whole thing? Hmm. I think. Uh, can you okay? Before I answer that, can you hear the banging that's going on? We are having our roof repaired today. Is that what it is? I heard a tiny bit, it? but not to where it was a little distracting or anything. It was just kind of a little bit in the background. It sounds like a herd of elephants are marching no, across our roof. No, it's not. No, right. basically all I hear, and who knows what's going to show up on the recording. I just hear a little bit of like, like maybe yeah. it, it would be the same sound as if like my dog was wagging her tail against the wall two okay. rooms over. Like it's yeah. not a big deal. Like they're working on the, it's so funny because I'm, our room is right next to the roof where they're working. And so I'm uh, in the closet <laughs> in our room. So it's like right here. Okay. Um, I just didn't want it to be a distraction, but yeah. No, so okay. our biggest struggle. Okay. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm so reluctant to give one because I've got, there are several. Because <laughs> there's so many. There are so Aww, many. No, 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 no. I don't mean it like that at all. <laughs> we are so blessed and, and whatever, but no, I, I have no complaints. Okay. Biggest struggle. One is utilizing our time in a way I think that we'll, that we'll look back on and be proud of. That's one of my thoughts is just wanting, and a lot of that comes, if you were to ask me, what's my personal biggest struggle, that's what it would be because I am not the greatest manager mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, like, you know, my strengths do, my strengths lie in implementing things, not necessarily managing and organizing. Yeah, and you're schedules. having to manage a lot. Yeah, There's a lot of management and mm -hmm. that is not my forte. Um, plus. Yeah having multiple avenues of management now um, right. has really stretched me. And because of house repairs, getting yeah. the house back in order after the repairs, mm -hmm. and then kids' schedules, um, yeah. meals have been so much different now because I'm cooking three meals a day for five people. And before oh, it was right. Right. different. Like breakfast on the go, lunch at school. Yeah, I could see right. that being the difference. So mm -hmm. it has been different, but it's been great in the sense of even though that's been my biggest struggle, I have seen a lot of growth in myself cool. through it. Um, so my biggest struggle is, has been the balance between not getting down on myself, but still maintaining right. a high bar and not just saying, okay, you can just sleep till noon and let the kids right. fend for themselves and, you know, stay in your PJs all day, which I've done. I've stayed, yeah, in, my P I've stayed in my PJs all day multiple days in a row at times, not necessarily the same PJs, but, um, <laughs> but I, you know, there have been days where I get to the end of the day and I'm like, Oh, I never changed out of my PJs right. and slippers, but I got a lot done. So the balance between, okay, some days I do feel like, um, and I think that's the key for me that of, to overcome that struggle has been taking each day as an individual day and saying, okay, yeah. this is a new day today. <laughs> right. I have a lot to do and I'm okay. You know, I'm, I'm doing housework. I'm okay. Staying in my PJs. The next day I wake up feeling kind of blah and down. Well, you know what? I need to take a shower and do my hair and put on makeup mm -hmm. and real clothes. And yeah. that's going to be what that day needs. And, and the kids, it's the same way. Some kids need a day to just, okay, you don't necessarily have to, you know, get on that meeting, just do something mm -hmm. constructive. Like my two younger ones yesterday, most of their day was spent doing an art project that the art teacher That's had sent fine. and making this little like, um, like a uh, puppet theater thing. Wow. And like, that was really educational or That's like really cute. two days ago was my husband's birthday. And so there, Eva helped me in the kitchen with, with Aww. making the cake and making the yeah. special dinner. And, you know, so like, I think, all of that has been really cool because it's, I've had to consciously be easy on myself in some ways, but, but also mm -hmm. challenge myself to do better at management and being more organized. Right. So, you know what I've started to think about? Have I told you my kind of parallel <clears throat> between this and like the whole Israel exile year of Jubilee, that kind of thing? Oh, I think so. Say it again, though. You mean like okay. the celebration? Okay. No, not the year of Jubilee. No, you have not yeah, yeah. mentioned okay. that. Because that's like so, every six years or something, right? 
Yeah, basically, you were supposed to work the land every six years and then take the seventh year totally off the land. We're supposed to lie fallow. You weren't supposed to have to harvest. Mm -hmm. or I think you could harvest, but you didn't have to plant. Like, you basically just harvested what came up and trusted God to give you, you know, what you would need for that year. And they never did that. And the reason that the exile was 70 years and not more or less is because they had to like what is it called when you have to make back payments for something do you know what i mean like they mm -hmm. they basically had to retroactively pay back those years of rest whoa and i almost feel like maybe this is god's i i don't want to say his judgment because i think that's too harsh but think about how just our society not even like christians but just society has not observed rest or sabbath in a long time, <laughs> like basically probably since the industrial revolution. And so this makes me almost feel like God, you know, like I know with my own body, if I work too hard and don't take two days off, <laughs> I'm going to get sick. And that's so basically like I am going to have to rest one way or the other. And I almost feel like this is, um, again, I don't want to call it God's judgment, but I almost feel like this is God's I don't know. Like I, I hate attributing this hardship to God. I think that that could get into murky waters at the very least be misconstrued by some people. But I've thought about this a lot in terms of just an enforced Sabbath where God saw that our human population was not going to slow down on our own. And so maybe this is his way of saying, okay, now you guys all have to slow down whether you want to or not. Yeah, I was listening to a podcast. Jenny Allen has a, has a podcast and interviewed uh, an American living in Wuhan. And oh, wow. She um, stayed for, their family is there for the long haul. They've been mm -hmm. there through it all. They did not evacuate. And just asking about kind of, because there now is our future in, yeah. you know, And are things kind of getting maybe. back to normal there? They yesterday so april 8th is that right yesterday was the <laughs> date that at least at the time the podcast had been recorded that was the date that that wuhan had given them that they would be getting back to at least some people okay. going back to work not everybody and like mm -hmm. her her particular or no but no april 8th was actually the day when they were allowed to go out so oh, they were, okay. businesses were allowed to reopen. Now, I don't reopen. know, I don't know how gradually they're doing that. And mm -hmm, I, I'd like to look mm -hmm. into that too, because I haven't, yeah. but that's what she said was, you know, they had been in, she was in an apartment complex that was pretty big, multiple buildings and their compound, uh -huh. they were allowed to walk freely around the compound like area, but mm -hmm. like there was a point where their building was locked. They couldn't leave their building. Oh, that's so kind of scary. Then they withdrew the locks on the buildings and it was just the compound that was on lockdown, I think. I think that's what they said. Wow. Um, and then on the 8th, they were allowed to leave the compound and go out. Yeah. So well, I don't, have you, go ahead. Oh, but she was saying that she was in the elevator and, and because even before the 8th, they had started opening up some things like letting them go out of the building. And she said, mm -hmm. I was in an elevator with like four other people and she said this sense of sadness washed over me realizing we're getting busy again. Like that was her yeah. thought was yeah. hmm, we're getting busy again. Like even though it's mm -hmm. not the same kind of busy, it's going to, it's going to go back. And so maybe our challenge individually, if not collectively yeah. is how, what are we going to learn? How are we going to revisit the way that we had been doing life For after sure. this? Mm -hmm. I think we have a really neat opportunity. Um, and, and going back to what you were saying earlier about your biggest struggle, I don't want people to feel guilty that they're not using this time perfectly well. Like this is such a strange time. It's so stressful. There are so many unknowns. Um, theoretically, I should be able to write as much as I would have before maybe even a little more since now my husband's home and can help with some things around the house like but that's not happening and again kind of like what you were saying i need to not feel guilty about that that's that's just the way it is so i think there's this balance of how can i make the use best use of my time while still being gentle <laughs> with myself and and i think that that's a fabulous question is what are we going to learn from this because i don't again i don't want them to say okay 
the danger's over, everyone go back to work and to have things look exactly like they did before. I don't, I think if that happened, we'd be missing the point a little bit. I think so too. And I, I think that some of the, if I were to look back and have any regrets, it wouldn't be that I did more house projects or that I didn't mm -hmm. do more stuff, but that I didn't just sit with my kids and read a book to them, that That's we didn't true. do family yeah. walks more or things yeah. like that. And I'm, I've already felt myself because of that other side of the coin pressure to mm -hmm. be productive during this time. I yeah. found myself being like, well, I got to get the house back in order from all the crazy construction and I've got to right. tidy up this and do that. And, and mm -hmm. you know, it, but I, I honestly, if I look at it, I have not done as much of the just sitting and yeah. reading with my kids or just sitting and mm -hmm. talking or, you know, so yeah. those are, those are the things that I feel like there's an urgency on my heart to make sure that mm -hmm. those things get done. No, that's really like that speaks to me for sure, because I have been feeling kind of creative guilt being like, come on, you know, your readers want some more books <laughs> and I'm not short of ideas. I'm just <clears throat> I'm a little short of energy because it is a stressful time. And to be totally honest, like I'm afraid I'm afraid of starting a story and then getting sick and having to take time off and then not getting back into it. Um, so I have been feeling some guilt there, but really like what you were saying once this whole thing is done and we come out on the other side, I'm, I don't think I'm going to be like, man, I should have written more books. Like I can, I can write books, you know, that's what I do, but Hey, I should have been around more for the kids, you know, hung out more, played more games, that kind of thing. I will say my plants are doing better than they ever have in my life. <laughs> I was going to ask, I was thinking about your prayer plant. Is it I still need... doing okay? Oh, it's doing great. And I yeah. found the perfect balance of letting it dry out just enough yeah. and then adding don't water. I don't know because I, I started off overwatering it and it yeah. didn't like it. And so I found the perfect uh -huh. balance. Uh, cool. I have had different people over the years give me beautiful orchids that you get from the oh, store. Orchids are hard. I oh. never, I would never want an orchid. That would feel like a, not a happy gift. That would feel like a curse. <laughs> well, I don't remember if it was my birthday or mother's day. I think it was my birthday this last mm -hmm. year. My mm -hmm. kids and my husband came home with an orchid and my first thought, uh -huh. my first thing out of my mouth was, I hope I don't kill it. Well, I know that's so, a lot of pressure. The blooms died off, but with the orchid, with this time where I'm like, in the, in the kitchen, probably 75% mm -hmm. mm -hmm. of the day, I'm able to, because our, our computer is there, everything yeah. is there, and I'm always looking around. And this little orchid has actually got like, it. Had, I have brought it back from almost dead. Really? To, I had been overwatering that too. And mm -hmm. then I would go back and forth between, uh, and so now I have the perfect balance of being able to look visually when it needs water. That's and cool. I do ice cubes, but it has a little new leaf for the first time. I have wow. never, never caused an orchid to generate something new. It's always just been like, right. The stalk it, you goes, keep it until it dies. Yeah. And the leaves. No, go. that's exciting. So, yeah, it is. My, my plants are doing well. I'll have to bring them into the, to this, this, uh, studio yeah. and show you one, one of these days. That would be fun. No, I'm really glad most of my house plants made it through the winter. I would say that, um, you know, like I may be lost. 10%, which isn't a ton. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a really fun way. You know, it makes it feel spring-like, you know, we don't have leaves on the trees quite yet, but you know, just having that green around, it's so calming. When I, um, first, when we first came here to visit, it was in August, um, before when we were living in Tucson, Arizona, um, and my husband had a job offer from here and we came up and looked around and we were driving around and I just said to my husband, what is up with these Alaskans and their hanging baskets? Like, oh, uh-huh. Hanging baskets everywhere. But now that I'm here, I get it. You can't, mm -hmm. the growing season and the summer is so yeah. fleeting. Yeah. You just get the same they, amount of time. Right. Mm -hmm. That you're not going to have as many like totally potted plants. And so having the baskets ready at the nursery to just hang out you know, mm -hmm. even when they haven't had time to grow. Yeah. So I just, yeah. I just love hanging baskets. So I think I might, um, when the time comes, I might splurge on a couple of hanging baskets this year or make that some. That sounds fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Well, I'm going to have to run fairly soon. Yeah. This might be a long one. I haven't kept track, but we might've been on for a while. Just well, I know, but chatting. it's, it's sometimes fun, you know, like sometimes it's nice to just 
show up and do what we need to do, but sometimes it's nice to just chit chat. All right. Well, I guess we ended with our scripture, right? So we just yeah. say goodbye to everyone and we'll check back in hopefully tomorrow. Yeah. Happy Maundy Thursday. Maundy <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And we'll, we'll see you on Good Friday. All right. Bye. Bye.